Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Magic Mike's, proudly sponsored by our Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, and our co-sponsor CardHoarder.com, offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards from Magic Online. I am Evan Irwin, and we get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, <laughs> Evan Irwin, I can say my name, my two co-hosts, Aaron Campbell. Uh, how's it going everybody? Ruben Bressler. Hi, how are you? Everything is lovely when I can say my own words. Hey. I just want to say, we were hanging out in the chat before, and there's someone in here from Australia. Hey, Australia. How's it going? It's wild. There's someone There's someone literally across the world who's watching us right now. That is wild. They're watching us at like 10 a.m. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. Well, happy happy watching. Welcome to the show. A little yeah, shrimp on the wrestler there, huh? Just... Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, now we don't have a viewer from Australia. And they're gone. Way to go, guys. Well, we also get started with our trumpet blasts. You can get one for yourself. They support us our highest level on Patreon. Don't have one this week, but if you would like to get your message out, something to a special message, friend, event, whatever, you can do that by supporting us at our top level on Patreon. Kick it off with our first pick and giveaway. The giveaway is a $50 gift certificate to CoolStuffInc.com. You can enter it by putting in uh, exclamation mark raffle in the chat right now. Uh, subscribers get an extra entry, so congratulations on that. Wow. Okay, so for the first pick, biggest thing this week. Oh my God, Wizards got it right. They did. I'm a little, yeah. I'm a, I'm a little freaked out. I, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm, I'm happily surprised. We're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Well, player of the year was a question because uh, Luis Salvato and Seth Manfield were are tied for the race for the 2017 and 2018 player of the year title. The last time in 2010 between Brad and Guillaume Matignon, that was fun. Uh, yeah. Because at that point I was with SCG. We made stickers that went into the Twilight Saga for those who remember Twilight. Uh, oh, wow. With you know, Brad, I think was the werewolf, <laughs> and Guillaume yep. was, the, the, was, was the vampire. vampire. Yep. Uh, still a better love story than Twilight, uh, just so you know. Uh, that said, uh, this time around, they're doing it a little bit differently. Uh, and and some people have issues with this, and we'll talk about it. Look, first of all, they're doing the Player of the Year playoff at Pro Tour Guilds of Ravnica. This is in Atlanta uh, on Thursday, November 8th. All right, so at the Pro Tour venue, they're going to have it. The format they'll be competing in will challenge their knowledge of the standard constructed format, the various decks in the format, and the matchups with a little twist on the best of seven showdown. They're going to submit four standard deck lists without sideboards by midnight on Monday, November 5th. Okay, these four standard decks submitted by each player cannot overlap more than eight non-land cards. Ooh. Okay, playoff day starts at 3 o'clock. Atlanta time will be streamed, of course, on the, the Magic uh, Twitch channel. They will compete in a best-of-seven playoff using a modified standard-constructed one-game match format, almost like you do in Arena, but they're not using Arena. I've actually gotten that confirmed. They're not using Arena. They're going to have one-game matches... They'll select one of their four submitted standard deck lists to battle. Once decks are chosen, the selections are revealed to both players. Players will have access to each other's deck lists and will have a brief moment to review what they're playing against. For this modified one-game match of standard, players will be able to take one free mulligan each game. God, this is weird. Once a player wins a match with one of their standard decks, they can't use that deck for the remainder of the playoff. In order to win the playoff, a player must win one game with each of the four decks they submitted. Yeah. Okay. How is that confusing? It's not confusing. It's just it's it's wildly different from the magic that we see on a pro yeah. scale. There's yeah. no you know what this boards. is? This is hashtag Dad Hearthstone format. Oh, yeah, boy. this is very Hearthstoney to me. I, I feel yeah. like and so there's a few issues with this. First of all, um, I, I was like, wow, this sounds really cool. We were not even getting to the pro streaming series that comes later. This in particular, this playoff, I was like, wow, that sounds really cool. You're doing a thing. You're doing an on. on a, you're streaming it. It's gonna be right before the pro tour. It's a, it's really unique and interesting. We'll see what they do with it. It could be a really good time. And uh, and Kai Bude, amongst others, were just like, whoa, this is Thursday before the pro tour. We don't want to do that. If you have an awesome deck for the pro tour, you're not going to want to show it off and debut it in this thing. And Otherwise, like, what are your decks going to be? The things you don't want to play or the things you do want to play? And maybe you got a crazy sideboard that they don't know about that you're going to use in the Pro Tour. Well, part of it, I think, and this is the sort of the other side of that argument, which is if they try to do this on Sunday, they're just going to get overshadowed by the actual Pro Tour winner. Yeah. It's just going to be it's going to be a byline at that point versus like this entire day is about the player of the year, win player of the year, making player of the year exciting and, and happening, and then doing the rest of the pro tour. 
So yeah, that to me was worth it. I'm, I I think that's worth that exchange. I agree that it's weird. There's probably not going to be a mono blue Theros esque like deck to come out of nowhere that's going to show up. But... I mean, that mono blue tempo deck is still around and is is quite powerful. What and by, the, uh, the mono, mono blue poopers as it's <laughs> often called. Oh, God bless Cat Light. I love that name. Well, yeah. and, and yeah, for what it's worth, I was thinking, I was saying more like there's not going to be some crazy tech. Right. There's show not going to be Thursday. someone breaking the format quite in the way that you've ever seen every once in a while at various tournaments. Yeah. Right. And for what it's there's, worth, you could see. There's not going to be a mono blue devotion deck. There's not going to be humans in modern with Collins Mullen just running through the whole thing. There's not going to be the solution. There's not going to be uh, the green white deck that three people made the top eight of at that one SCG championships in New Jersey. Like that's probably not going to happen. Right. So that's, that's a thing uh that that is happening again i felt like wow they're going to do this on magic arena right because there's no shuffling there's no slowdowns it's going to be really exciting the animations are really nice and they're like no 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 we're going to do it with real paper okay um when they start eh. using arena for for the pro tour don't don't tell you i didn't tell you so all right just saying yeah that's... the only thing that bugs me about it is that it is on a thursday right thursday. like that's kind of weird but if that's my main complaint then okay that's fine. Um, well, look, they also introduced the pro streaming series, which I was way more excited about. Also the best. Starting, yeah. I guess, which will be this week, uh, you'll be seeing familiar faces from the Pro Tour and Twitch.tv slash Magic during weekdays. Uh, they're going to feature some of the Pro Tour's best competitors as they stream Arena for three-hour blocks on the Twitch channel. Note, they're not streaming Magic Online, they're streaming Arena. Uh, that said, the first two pros in the streaming series are going to be Seth Manfield and Luis Salvato. Of course, they're streaming up to the Pro Tour Guilds of Ravnica week themselves, which will be interesting. Um, from starting Thursday, October 18th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. that day. Uh, and that's Pacific time, by the way. While Seth has the stream from 6 p.m. until 9 p.m. again, all times are Pacific. So this, to me, was a way for them to take their stars and build them. So did anyone ask Javier Dominguez? That's Well, that's what I pointed out on Twitter. I was like, yo... Let's get Javier in there ASAP. And Twitch said, or uh, Trick rather said, you know, he's working on that, definitely on the radar. Okay. You know, okay. want to see what's <laughs> happening. Because again, like the world champion is kind of hard to find and they don't really put him in a lot of places and they don't really talk about him that often and they need to fix that. So part of fixing that is having a streaming series that, that features your pros. I think that's a great idea. 100% awesome. Uh, it's I love very, it. Very similar I, to. I think that, uh, that's, you know, Seth and Luis are both really good choices as well as Javier. Because oh, yeah. they're so uh, uh, interesting and unique in the pro circuit, even on top of all their accomplishments. Yeah, it's very similar to what um, the SCG uh, versus uh, stuff yeah. has been doing. They're been doing live shows instead of canned shows uh, with live commentary, and they put it on the Twitch channel. And that, to me, was a perfect evolution of what that series was anyway. Uh, and this, to me, is, is the way for Wizards to go, hey, maybe we should star build some of these people who we're giving all this money and time and attention to, and that's a good thing. The other, uh, the other cool thing that uh, Arena uh, did this week, I think it was this week, was they're doing uh, Arena featured creators. Oh yeah, we're getting to picking... that. Oh yeah, are we doing that? Oh yeah, it's on the list. Okay. Sorry. Um, no, it's fine. Jumping but, ahead. but I think you can go over here and say, you know, one of the for a uh, a candidate for the 2018 Magic Mikesies would be the Pro Streaming Series. I will add it to the list. I literally just did. Oh, did you? Okay, uh, which is good. Because we needed it. I like to praise them when they don't screw it up. So good job, guys. Yeah, I mean it's <clears> wizards. <throat> they very well could have had them in one of those crazy hurricane tube things and like just grabbing dollars. Like you never know what wizards would have come up with otherwise. I have no idea. Well, look, go over here to gather the townsfolk. Jim Davis, our friend, friend of the show, Jim Davis. Now uh, a uh, more or less an employee of mine, writing for CoolStuffInc.com. He's going to write. Uh, written articles on Friday, video article on Monday. I'm going to be sponsoring his stream, so we'll be doing giveaways and interacting with his uh, community and stuff there, which is awesome. He's been streaming yesterday. He was streaming today. He's doing a 12-hour stream tomorrow. Wow. That culminates into a giveaway of five booster boxes. That is a booster box of every set in standard from Ixalan, Rivals, Core, uh, Dominaria, and Guilds of Ravnica, all going to one lucky winner. And, uh, and, you know, just welcome him to the team. I'm very excited to that uh, I could get him to, uh, to write for CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah, yeah, that's a big get. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty big seed change in, uh, in, in um, content for CSI. So that's a, that's congrats on that. And I'm excited to see how you guys partner going forward. 
Yeah, I'm a big fan of Jim. Uh, Jim sometimes hangs out in the chat. You can sometimes find Jim in our chat on some evenings. Uh, Jim also likes to host me whenever I'm streaming personally. He will, if he finishes a stream, he will send his chat to me. Even when I'm not playing Magic, you know, there have been some nights where I've been playing World of Warcraft and I will see him kind of raid my stream and I'm like, Jim, there's no Magic here. Like, I'm so sorry. And he's just like, here you go. And so, um, yeah, really great guy. I really enjoy hearing about his family and the house they're building together. I've run into him at events. I've had a, I tried hitting him up for coaching recently and he has been so busy that he had to like turn off the coaching like he can't coach anymore for a while because he's so backed up with requests and so um he's very very huge right now uh you know really great guy really great person and i i enjoy his stuff and i'm glad that we got him yeah i'm re i'm really excited about it and again i want to you know i want to give uh all you people out there reasons to come to coolstuffinc.com every day to see all the super cool content and, and i also want to kind of tie this into the previous subject you know jim is one of those people who i feel like I feel like, you know, we, we talk a lot about star building and I, I do feel like star building kind of goes both ways. And I feel like a lot of times there are times where, you know, you try to give the attention to a pro, but the pro doesn't necessarily know what to do with it. And that's not being shady and that's not being, you know, mean or anything, but Jim is somebody who it kind of goes both ways. Like not only are you going to be promoting him, but he also knows how to promote himself. And I feel like there are still some pros out there that are really great players, but if you were to leave it up to them, they wouldn't stream and they wouldn't tweet and they wouldn't go to events. And it's like some people that comes very naturally for, and then there are others that you need to kind of prod like, Hey, you're a rookie of the year. You, you got to get out there a little bit. And so Jim is somebody who's never had a problem doing that. So those are, those are, those are kind of diamonds in the rough and when you have them you know never let them go <laughs> yeah i mean I... and in case you thought jim was the only one who had a brand new premiere on coolstuffinc.com a little help uh shameless self-promotion here Ayo. if you go to cool stuff and check out mtg 101 you might recognize the narrator voice of video number one for thalia uh, that would be one Mr. The Internet's Ruben Bressler. Who? Uh, that, uh, Who? I've never heard of him. He's oh. not great. Uh, but I, I'm <laughs> going to start doing some voiceover for uh, some of those MTG 101 videos. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wait, how come How come you're doing voiceover and not? Because it's not <laughs> ASMR. It, it, it's uh, auditory sensory <laughs> action just recording my voice into a microphone. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's well, cool. That's cool. That's, that's, that absolutely is correct. Go in there and uh, check out the new content that showed up today which is awesome, along with Jeff Hoagland, along with Vorthos Mike's awesome Guilds of Ravnica art review. Uh, and he has another little bit we'll talk about here in later. Um, but yeah, and, uh, and the Maverick girl, Kendra Smith herself, who I believe is in chat. Yes. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, but that said, Jim Davis, welcome, buddy. Uh, happy yeah. to have you. That said, uh, all right, so we're going to follow up on a story that we talked about a week or two ago where Bruce Richard was explaining. First reported here. No, not really. But not really. But it's Actually, fine. yes, because I knew it was coming back at Gen Con during the pre-show. I told you guys to brace for some nonsense, and then it came down the pipe. So. Well, the nonsense got here, uh, <laughs> but luckily the nonsense was solved in some degree uh, by Wizards of the Coast providing some product uh, to the kids in the library. I'm going to bring up the Twitter post right now so you guys can see it. Uh, round one of the hashtag free release begins, uh, he tweeted out, October 14th at 8 a.m. And so these kids got to come here, play Magic, Wizards made it right. They're not in a weird, creepy store or a store. They, they got to play at the library, and yes. I recognized a lot of the faces. And I was just, I was so, my heart was so warmed by seeing this. And the kids just looked so stoked. Uh, there was a picture that he took from what looks like maybe the top of the library, and they're all waving. And it's like, what are the clues? I can't, I can't. Like, just, I was so happy. And oh, just kind of following the hashtag throughout the day, and, and God bless them. And I, I, it was a great thing. Yeah, so that's uh, that is super cool, and uh, and I hope that we don't have to go through this again for Ravnica Allegiance that we can solve this problem and not have this issue in the future. Yeah. Uh, but all's well, you know, that's ending well. Yeah. So, uh, Aaron, tell us about some weddings. I've I've been been talking about. I, tell us about there were weddings. a couple people. It feels like who either got married recently or are getting married or are getting engaged. Uh, PVD PVD got married this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lovely video that Willie shared. I assume Willie was at the wedding of PB dancing. PB had his dancing shoes on. It was dancing with his gorgeous uh, mm -hmm. Fiance. Oh, dance dance revolution. <laughs> Um, and got engaged, now married. His wife is gorgeous. And there was a picture of the wedding dance. And so PB is off the market. Like everybody's 
everybody's growing up. This is so wild. And then our friend Allie Medwin, who we know from Wizards, uh, Allie's due to get married very soon. And somebody had made her uh, some magic cards. You know, people love to do these sort of parody cards of like engagements or things of that nature. And Allie decided to share the cards that were made for her on Reddit uh, with a Merry Target Player card and uh, seemed to get a very good reception from this. And I'm very happy for her, Allie being one of my good friends. Also the godmother of the Trans Mafia, just so you're aware, if you want to get in, you got to go through her. Hashtag um, Trans Mafia. Hashtag Trans Mafia. And so I'm so happy for her. I unfortunately couldn't make it to her wedding. I couldn't get the time off, but uh, super happy for her. And just so much, just so much love and so many weddings going around. And I think it's great. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of love in the MTG community these days. Speaking yeah. speaking of uh, of other lovey-dovey family things that have happened, quick shout out to our buddy and former co-worker and current uh, host and editor of the Card Hoarder podcast, Connor O'Donnell, who mm -hmm. had a little baby. Ooh, Ooh, O'Donnell. With a little head. Um, he also edits the, the, the GAM podcast. I freaking okay. love babies. Like, you don't understand. There are people I follow on social media just for their babies. Like, do you guys know Shivam? Yeah. I will sit through an entire thread about Siddhartha and Silly String because I know there's a, pic a, a, a picture of his baby coming. Like I'm just I mean, I follow Shivam for for the 88 late uh, uh, tweet thread <laughs> on Siddhartha and, you know, and Bodhisattva. Like, that's what I'm like, signing up for. Can I just get a picture? Like, come on, just I'll sit through it. Give me a baby. Like, I just love. And the only thing better than a cute baby is a fat baby. Like, when they have the little arm, the little arm. I can't. I can't. I can't. I just. Oh. We were discussing. You know, there's comedians uh, who make bits about eating I babies. Want to nibble on your baby. I'm gonna eat the baby, but oh. eat the baby. And everybody wants to eat the baby. It's incredible. Mm, don't eat the oh. baby. Don't eat the baby. Can't. Also, don't eat the Tide Pods. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Well, look, there are some new pro teams coming out. It's it's almost launch of the new pro team season. You know, there's players kind of throwing out feelers. There's players who are talking to other people privately, trying to get all this stuff in place. And some teams kind of showed up this week. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, Team Legion showed up. Mm -hmm. This will be uh, from Legion of Supplies. Uh, they have Team Legion with Jerry Thompson, uh, Oliver uh, Tomiko. Tomiko. Wait Tomiko. a minute. You can say Guillaume Matignon, but you can't say Oliver Tomachko. Because <laughs> now it's Tomachko? When, when he was learning about Guillaume Matignon, he was like in, in charge of that project. He's never okay. done an Oliver Tomiko led. Okay. He's never turned Oliver into a vampire sticker is the okay. problem That's right you gotta got make it. me turn you into a sticker and then i'll never forget okay uh, along with ben freeman noan walker and oliver too uh and jacob wilson so like that's a that's a heck of a roster for them uh which is nice uh eric froelich known he is teaming up with sam black david williams steve steve rubin and ben Yu, uh along with uh on team win for quinn they are not sponsored yet i didn't is i didn't know if this was a parody or not like is this real yeah, I think it's real. I okay, I mean, I think it's real. great. I just wasn't sure because it just seemed kind of like it was. It, it you know they it sold kind of. I didn't know if it was. I do like yeah, the that, hashtag. The Queen in question. The the uh, the title track of the album is uh, Quinn Kiefer of the fabulous uh, uh, Kiefer fabulous Kiefer Boys. Yeah. Um, and the future of Magic the Gathering pro scene. So uh, I, I really am looking forward to that. Well, yeah. the, the Ben Sec, also known as TBS, I think said it best with hashtag Quinning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, so good job there. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, there was a survey that uh, that Willie Edel kind of presented to the world and got some feedback from, and uh, and then presented his findings to Wizards, and gave not all of his findings, but a bunch of his findings back to us, along with some results from this survey he did at the end of September. Um, and he he wrote up a big Google Doc where essentially he was asking things about like uh, the PTQ formats. Turns out everybody hated it, which is nice because they killed it. Um, no one liked the PPTQ system. Uh, things like new competitive formats, for example, he thinks that Popper GPs are probably a year off that we're just hmm. not there yet for uh, for Popper, but the but we are building, which is good. Um, oh God, I could hear Kendra screaming all the way over here. <laughs> I mean, he, he, it sounds like the wheels are turning. Uh, Pauper, a Pauper GP, Kendra. You're going to love that. It's going to be great. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and then it went, then also went into things like, you know, the, the audience would rather see two constructed formats, whereas the pros would rather see the constructed format and the limited portion, because again, they basically don't really like change, particularly at that very high level. And if you could just not rock the boat and just let me play my pro tour the way I'm playing my pro tour and shut up, that'd be great. Um, whereas I think it would behoove them to have standard and modern as a pro tour fo format. I mean, it just seems to make a lot of sense to be honest. Um, 
but yeah, there's uh, and the qualification system for nationals, for example, um, they said you know no one wants to keep uh, planeswalker points as the only way to get there. Like that's mm-hmm. really annoying. Um, <clears throat> such as regionals plus planeswalker points or something of that nature. Uh, remember back in the day, if your elo, if your rating was high enough, you could just go play at nationals. I think you had to be yep. like eighteen or nineteen hundred. Um, right. But, there were a bunch of problems with elo though. So. Oh yeah, and it encouraged you not to play magic, which was the worst right. part of it. Um, Anyway, hey, uh, Jim Davis appears in the chat. Hey, oh, hey you're, you're late. We talked about you already. Yeah, buddy. You already been ran. Already cheered to chat <laughs> about how awesome you are. Um, but that said, uh, the it was interesting to note about the promotional material and what was most important for WPN stores. By far, 98% of stores considered pre release kits the most important WPN product. And I would agree with that. Yeah. I mean, uh, the runner-up is the, and this really shocked me, beating out FNM promos is the standard showdown kit. With really? Seven, with 78% of relevance, followed by FNM at 77. So we're talking neck and neck, but I was like, really? Standard showdown kit above FNM? Yeah, I, that is a something that is just not in my wheelhouse at all. I'm not sure I've ever been to a standard showdown. I have not. I have. <clears throat> yeah, so it's... Uh, that's a that's a really interesting uh, uh, take because you know that's a that's a relatively new project. It started in Kaladesh uh, like a couple years ago. Right. So you know it's uh, it, and we're we're terribly old people that never leave the house at this point. So it's not not for <laughs> us. But um, but yeah, that's that, that that was a fascinating part of this. We're, you we're have no busy. idea how right you are. There's a legacy tournament this Saturday, and my friend Ken was like, "Hey, you want to go?" And I was like, "Um, I can go one three drop from my bed. Like, I don't have to like leave the house to do that. It's getting cold out here. It's getting cold out here. <laughs> the magic cards they gotta be shuffled. My my you know my joints are gonna hurt. This is not how I'm working. <laughs> um, interesting with the favorite formats, the most popular format, Shocker, is modern." With fifty-one percent of the worldwide preference, after we we have standard at nineteen percent, they like modern Listen, two and a half times better than standard. Standard is half. sweet right now. I streamed standard the other day. Gabriel Nassif just posted some <clears throat> updates to his uh, gruesome menagerie list with Midnight Reaper. I'm telling you, if that that's the little zombie. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, I uh, know what it is. I played with it. It's good. Does everything I'm gonna be doing in life. If that deck is even remotely viable, come GP Milwaukee, it's gonna be lit. Like Mama's gonna be playing standard. It's on. Like oh, as so as right now. Good. All I want to do is play a black green deck that just puts two plus one plus one counters on my druid of the cowl with find and finality. <laughs> That's all I want to be doing. And you can do that. And I've done it, and it's fan freaking tastic. The whole the super explore deck is really fun. There's a green black just kind of grinding out yeah. value. There's with... like eight green black decks. Honestly, the one I want to play is the gruesome menagerie goblins. That looks super fun to me. And you were right, Evan. I think you were the one that called Vivian Reed a while back. Vivian's Vivian's Vivi, busting out. Miss Reed yeah. is having her moment, and yes, it's great. And so I have, a, I have a foil Vivian in my Arcades the Strategist EDH deck. So uh, probably well, standard is so sweet that I can't possibly test all of the decks. Like I feel like every time I see a deck, and I'm like, I'm gonna like when the Muldrotha deck came out, I was like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna play this deck a little bit, and then two more lists came out, and I was like, oh, I'm not even done with this one. Like there's just so much sweet tech coming out every day, and I think standard looks great right now. I'm just yeah. saying, I, I didn't necessarily call it, call it, but I was just like, this girl is too cheap and too good. Yeah, not to see I'm in the room. Like, hello. It just, it, Kaladesh and, and friends and Almanket needed to get out of here. I'm oh, sorry. You said cheap and good. I thought you were doing. Right. Oh, wow. You either get, you eat, the old sales saying is you either get cheap, good, or fast. Choose two <laughs> or three. You only get two. You only get two of the three. So cheap and good, not fast for Aaron. No. <laughs> that would probably be Slow. cheap and fast. Right, uh-huh. keep it fast. Not Evan's very... Evan's good and fast. Right. Hashtag Cheap. hashtag no. five kids. Fire them out there. <laughs> oh boy. Well, look. All I know is standard has nineteen percent approval with commander right behind it at eighteen percent and limited at ten percent. Oh. One number hmm. that is really impressive is that among North American stores, only six percent of them list standard as a popular format, which is way lower than the rest of the world that have it around twenty six percent. That's that's super small. Interesting. Six like percent. That's almost nothing. That's bad. Okay, and then PBTQs, everybody hated them, nobody cares, they killed them all. 
That's great. Listen, my friend Nick Prince won a PPTQ the other day. So shout out to my friend Nick Prince with Celestia. He took the whole thing down. I'm so happy for him. And I hope he continues to do well. Well, that's terrific. Um, yeah. You know, and it goes over coverage a little bit. These numbers get kind of weird because, you know, it's coverage and everyone's like trying to fix coverage, Ribbon. but they don't know exactly what's wrong with it. And, uh, you know, when we moved on from there, because I don't really want to break down that data, but testing new PT formats, this is what we were talking about with the standard and draft, modern and draft thing, um, and team formats, which, again, broken into general versus only pros. And, again, pros kind of like the standard existing model. They don't want to change things up, which I understand that. Um, but, again, uh, I'll link the document into the chat. You guys can go ahead and check out all the super cool stuff that Willie Edel broke down again he actually this is part of his report to wizards again stuff that he couldn't share part of his nda is removed but there is still a lot of data a lot of interesting things to look at and think about um as a result of running the survey i'm glad that he did it and that it came out that, that he also held on to it until after the official survey came out uh was pretty great 40 over 4500 responses um so it's a it's a pretty comprehensive survey yeah, and it was nice that he could also, you know, weed out the pros versus everyone yeah. else because I think that's a really good way to look at it. Um, you know, I feel like the the pro bias stuff, and and my favorite example I think of the pro bias stuff is how long was it before we had Magic Online drafts where you could play with any with people other than the seven other people that you drafted with? Like, right? That was that was crazy. You know, that was monumental and groundbreaking and blah blah blah, blah and something I asked them about. 10 years ago, literally 10 years from the day that showed up, I had been asking them for that type of feature because who cares? Who cares? The pros care. And the pros were in charge of those decisions. Whereas yeah. the average magic player is like, I just want to play magic and, but I got to go like run an errand. You know, I've never been more wrong in my entire life than on that, that particular, uh, decision there where i was like but what about draft signals and turns out no one cares no one cares <laughs> i was almost as wrong there as evan was about black lotus in the mtg bracket oh almost almost as wrong oh to get that dagger in there nice sharp dagger i i appreciate that well look we'll move on here to desperate ravens you mentioned it briefly uh earlier MTG Arena has announced that they are going to introduce MTG Arena featured creators. Every week they'll be picking five awesome content creators from within our community uh, and showcasing their talent. And the first week of Fabulous Creators is here. Uh, they're already, they've already been running, as I understand it here. Yep. Tomorrow will be Sly09, and Friday will be Adam Coble. Um, but, you know, congrats to MTG Nerd Girl, of course, Gabby Sparts, and uh, Aaliyah SV uh, for, uh, for being awesome. Or Alias? Alias. Alias, Alias Vaughn. Alias Vaughn, Twitch, yes. Um, so that's cool. Uh, and this actually kind of leads into uh, an article I linked a little further down, which uh, our friend of the show... Uh, MTG Goldfish himself, Saffron Olive, a.k.a. Seth, uh, was talking about it's time to stop comparing Magic Arena to Magic Online. And there's one thing that he didn't mention, but it was part of the thing that made it ring so true, is that throughout all of this, despite all of us wanting it to be more Magic Online-y, um, there are no foils in Magic Arena. And right. there's no impetus. There's no there, there's no signs. They've said literally nothing about adding them to the client. They don't necessarily seem interested in adding foils to the client. Whereas foils on Magic Online is a big deal. Getting your you know getting your sets blinged out. You can redeem foil sets. Like there's a whole a whole you know category of things you can do with those digital objects that you can't do in MTG Arena. They shut yeah. down duels. We have Arena. Arena is here. It's a great way to get people who are just not in franchised, you know, like yeah. we're in that for a pound. That was the big thing about the article for me was like, you know, I, I didn't see, I didn't re, I had never really looked at it through the lens of them being for different audiences, but they're right. You know, right. the example he give he gave was that a Planeswalker deck isn't built with the guy that has the fully blinged out legacy deck in mind and vice versa. Uh, it can be, you know, it can be everything to everyone or you can split it up down the middle like this. And I, it just never occurred to me. Yeah. If it's uh, the idea essentially that 
arena is to get the new player, the intermediate player, the people who were like, oh, I remember Magic. Have they made that easier to play? And they're like, yeah, you don't have to play with that god-awful program anymore. This is cool. It's slick. It's easy. It's it's shiny. It's got animations and whatnot. And you can have fun with it. And you don't have to put money into it. But if you do, you can build a bunch of whole, you know, really cool decks. Already at this point, some a bunch of the pros are in on it. Uh, you know, Brad Nelson was tweeting about how you know day three and uh, he and his girlfriend are fully entrenched and dishes overflowing the sink and laundry piling up and oh god, you know, save us all because it really is a terrific way to play Magic. I've not played, I've played more Magic thanks to Magic Arena than I have probably in the past five years combined. Wow. And I've, you know, and from various times, stints and starts on, on Magic Online, because I enjoyed drafting, I like sealed deck, but it was just too expensive. Whereas I'm able to spend, literally just spend less money and play more Magic. That's more or less where I'm at right now with Arena. I can go put 20 bucks in Arena and get five times the amount of gameplay, you know, out of, out of that program than I can MTG Online. And yeah. it's fine that both of these systems exist. And it's also something I tried to point out this past week was like, look, MTGO didn't have legacy for a very long time. MTGO didn't have the power nine for a very long time. That was a huge deal. Don't think they can't go back and add everything they want to this client that they choose to. Uh, one of the arguments he puts in the article is that they wouldn't want to do exactly that because it's overwhelming. Whereas I think what, MTG Arena is trying to get into is a very cyclical, you cycle in, you cycle out, different ways to play Magic, and so you don't overwhelm the average player. And and Aaron doesn't care. <laughs> Just be clear. Well, the other thing the other thing I want to add real quick is that it's it's all fine and good. I agree with a lot of his points, but if you click on Twitch and you click on the Magic the Gatherings, there's no there's no separation between Arena and Magic Online and Live. They're still all really competing for the same audience. And I think the audience is clearly trending towards the shinier, flashier. Absolutely. Animated option. The, and, the, the Magic Arena Twitter has more followers than the Magic Online Twitter. Magic Online's been around for 20 years. years. Yeah. A, a very long time. I mean, again, look at the success there. Look at the success here um, and just play the thing. I mean, if you if you are listening to this podcast, first of all, you're in like the 2%, you know, of Magic players anyway. Um, but, you know, Magic MTG Arena is definitely worth the time to try out. Aaron, have you, have you played <laughs> MTG Arena? I, I have not touched it since the beta. Um, okay. No. Fair enough. Well, you might want to just... <laughs> Might want to just dabble, you know, a little drafty here. You know, I, it's funny. I, I like to just, oh, you, you know, like we were draft. talking about this kind of in the pre-show and how it's like, you know, for me, you know, time equals money kind of thing. And it's like, you know, I, I'm not going to harp on it too much because I know YouTube hates when I do it, but I'm still not hundred percent clear as to the process, number one. Um, but number two, you know, I'm the kind of person where I like sort of a, a, a third party economy. You know, I like being able to just simply say, you know, this is the deck that I want to play. I want exactly these cards. I don't want a bunch of Boros cards. I don't want a bunch of Simic cards and and God bless the people who are able to to enjoy that experience, but it's just not for me personally. I have nothing against it. It's obviously successful, but you know, I, I don't want to have to open packs and draft and make wild cards and all of that. I would rather just buy exactly what I need. That's the deck I want to play, that's the deck I want to test. And you know, if if that's not the experience I can get, then I'm just really not interested. So change is bad fair enough change yeah. is bad that's what we're, that's what we're talking about <laughs> it's not it. bad and again they're not competing with each other you're right. it's yeah. totally cool yeah it's like fine. and for those who are still playing I love magic it. Online, you love it yeah like you are you have been really excited about it and i've seen a lot of people who you know have you know have not been as excited you know about magic in general get really excited about arena like i love that you love it you know it's for me it's not a competition it's just you know we talk about a lot on the show just being able to say you know something is great it's just not for me like i have no ill will towards it just not playing and I'm yeah, not trying and, to be like wishing ill will. Clearly, one of our sponsors is relying on this game living. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. not trying to kill it. I'm trying to say, like, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, if the writing is on the wall or not. And I feel like one no, of the things not. that this. And I don't the think the writing's article, on the wall. I don't right. Well, again, there is so much. Can you hold on a second? I was literally about to say you're right. I was about to say that I think this article helps prove that there's mm. no writing on the wall in that regard right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's still so much that you can only do on Magic Online much less that you can't do on Magic Arena. Things like, no one's testing for the Pro Tour with Magic Arena, right? Sure about that? Nobody, nobody can play Cube on Magic Arena. 
Nobody I mean, does, you know, the, the, the audience is so, is so different at this point. And I get the popularity of arena and the shiny and newness, but, uh, but magic online is here to stay for at least a little while. Yeah, for sure. There's, and again, there's also going to be a very game changing moment when they have a friend system right now. Yeah. I can't say let me and you Ruben, let's go test this matchup on MTG arena for a couple hours. We can't do that. Can't it's do it. Literally impossible right now. So that will be another you know seismic shift in terms of what happens and how many people play arena and use arena and in what ways um i think there's not much testing for the pro tour if you can't test with anyone you can only test with whatever they throw at you and that's not always pro tour caliber play okay we got a cheater <laughs> and not, i took personal offense to this one not we like, caught a hanger chief oof, and not like a little cheating like a bad cheating dan lanthier which again this this is the same guy who's won multiple grand prix is that he won canadian nationals jeez um i have what... a fun story about him too but i'll wait till later <laughs> feel free to preface it or have it after because we're no, diving it's just, it's just kind of petty so my the only time i ever met him was it was it uh, grand prix vegas one of the big vegases and i remember he was sitting around me and he was one of those people who liked to kind of name drop and so he was just like oh yeah you know i'm on the canadian team and i'm with john stern and i'm like yeah kai buddha calls me to talk about feminism like get in line like what are you doing and so i thought it was really funny that he tried to name drop me and i was like i had 11 hall of famers on my show like who are you sorry just <laughs> well, look, bring it back uh, to a gunfight, buddy. <laughs> Wizards Tower, which uh, is apparently a local game store that he yeah. was playing at, that they were streaming. Support your local FLGS. That's right. Yeah. They, they were streaming a modern event. Uh, they released a statement. Uh, essentially, what Dan was doing was he cracked a fetch, and he had already, I'm guessing, put. Did he? Did he not put his stomping grounds in his? No. no so he had one? a stomping. Yeah, go ahead. This is Sorry. Dredge, Ruben. I'll handle this. Um, oh. So he had a stomping ground in the graveyard. He cracked a fetch and then took the stomping ground from the graveyard, shuffled it into his deck, and it was like, what? that that's not how Dredge works. <laughs> and then he like found it, right? You know, because. Right. And then he tried right. to say something that like he had over dredged, and that he was simply trying to correct the situation. And it's like, again, that's not how this works. <laughs> And then he immediately shut down all of his social media. And yeah. next thing you know, Wizards Tower says, look, on Saturday, October 13th, during their modern event, Dan Lanthier was caught uh, manipulating his deck during a match. After the event, the incident was reviewed by the owner and a local L2, where he was DQ'd from the event. A full report of the incident has been put forward to us, or forward by us to the DCI and Wizards of the incident. Uh, we also contacted all players. Check this out. They contacted all players involved in matches against Dan and provided them with the correct prize based on where they would have finished had they <laughs> won those games. That's above and beyond. Let me yeah. tell you. Wizards Tower, y'all, that was that yeah. was amazing. Good job there. Um, and Wizards need to take note, by the way. Just so we're saying. Uh, the behavior and actions exhibited are unacceptable to anyone at, the, at Wizards Tower and will not be tolerated. Uh, they always strive and work towards creating a safe and fun environment for all staff and customers. The incident was not representative of this, and we have given a lifetime ban to Dan Lanthier from wow. playing mm -hmm. any events at our store. More like ban Lanthier, am I right? Uh, yeah. I have to bring up a comment someone in chat said because it's so gold. Maybe he should have watched that Wizards-sponsored video about sleight of hand. <laughs> Yeah, very rarely do I, like, I watch Penn and Teller's Fooled Us, and I don't catch any of that stuff. And they're like, oh, I think I saw what you did, and I I, I can't, I don't got an eye for that one. I, I, I like mean, it when they use, like, the code names. Oh, you're doing, like, the Reuben Cadillac? And I'm like, what? Right? Uh -huh. What is happening? Yeah. You know, yeah, this but, was frustrating. Uh, this was frustrating. This one I caught on, like, but once I knew what I was looking for, I was like, oh, oh, dear. It was really obvious, too. Like, a lot of these yeah. videos that come out, you really have to, like, pause it, you know, go go with, like, 1x speed, catch it. But this was so blatant, it. and it was so, it was so frustrating for me as a dredge player because, you know, I try really hard to – I feel like if you're going to play a broken deck, you have a bit of an additional responsibility to try to be as above board as possible. And I get a lot of flack sometimes because some people might say I'm a little too deliberate. You know, my graveyard's in rows. I announce my life from the loan targets. I announce everything I'm eating of my Icarid. But I know that I am doing broken things and that if, if I don't necessarily – I'm happy to sort of show you my work. And – you know, I want you to know what's going on, and, and I don't want it to seem like th there's a lot of breeding ground there to do broken things and to be underhanded. And so I do try to be as above board as possible when I'm playing, and I feel like that's an obligation that I have. And so it's very frustrating when I see people 
you know, almost almost making my deck look bad where people are going, oh, you know, your graveyard's a mess and you're not doing your thing. And it's like, we're not all like that, you know? And so I was upset about it as a magic player, but I was infuriated as, as a dredge player. It's like, way to make the rest of us look bad, you know? <laughs> so according to our chat here, uh, this is one of the largest stores in Ottawa. Uh, this is not necessarily the first or, la or last time that uh, he's been accused of doing some shady behavior. It usually never is. It often, you know, there's often yeah. smoke before that fire showed up. And... Yeah we have a response that is harsher than wizards is giving other people who have been cheating or had history of cheating or whatever mm -hmm. to which I've got, I've gotten the response of, Hey, this is a store and that's a multinational corporation and there's, there's levels and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, look, no, first yeah. of all, wizards, Still waiting on that response to cheaters. You know, part of the reason that Jerry didn't play in your world championships, you still haven't said anything about that. That's still a problem. I've not forgotten, and I'll keep bringing it up. Because Alex Bertoncini right now is going to be playing at Pro Tour Ravnica Allegiance. I'm not okay with that. Jerry's not okay with that. A lot of people are not okay with this, and Wizard sees that to be not a problem. I see that to be a big problem. I see this to be a nice example case of seriously you're gonna go you're gonna be so petty at a freaking store what would you do at a big event where serious money's on the line and not like a booster box or whatever they were giving away like what what happens when it gets real when it gets big well, money well it's another thing to sort of it, it would be one thing if he you know owned up to it and was like you know i did it i made the mistake but when you nobody bought the explanation you know nobody bought the i over dredge and i was trying to fix it i discarded the conflagrates that weren't in my graveyard and do you know what i did i called a judge <laughs> i was laughing but i called a judge i was like you know what i did this thing um you know i've even drawn to grizzle brands that i didn't even have i've drawn seven and been like whoop judge <laughs> You know, and so it'd be one thing if you just own your nonsense. If you were like, you know what? I got sloppy. This was going on. I did it. You know, I talk a lot about people who don't know how to apologize. Just own your nonsense. Be like, you know what? I did it. I got sloppy and I'll take what comes. But when you when you try to do the gymnastics and you try to jump through the hoops and you try to, you know, I was just compensating for my board. No, you weren't. No one bought that explanation. And I feel like there might be, you know, you might be able to give somebody the benefit of the doubt if they just own it right out of the gate. But when they just double down, it's like, I just can't really, can't really roll with you at that. Point. I mean, I think a good way to look at it is uh, the uh, the Ken Yukihiro DQ, right? He knew he messed up. He he was like, you know what? I should have been stronger. I should have been better. I should have called it earlier. It provided him no advantage, but he knew it was wrong. He was DQ'd, mm -hmm. and, and it's like, okay, we we get it. We understand. We were, you know, we saw it happen. There's clear evidence of what was going on. Yes, you should have known better. Yes, you should have done better. So on and so forth. Okay, fine. But then we have the whole denials. We have the turning off of the accounts. We have the go hide in a hole somewhere. And eventually you're just like, look, man, playing magic is not a human right. You are not born with enable rights of playing in PTQs and Grand Prix. It's just a game and you can go play something else. And yeah, yeah. our game this. doesn't have to be your redemption story. Go do that elsewhere. Yeah. Like, you know, if you're such a good gamer, go do it on a digital platform where you literally can't cheat. <laughs> Just saying, if you're so good, right? I mean, you get caught for cheating like that Chinese Taipei Hearthstone team. <laughs> <laughs> Don't watch the stream on, like, your phone at the Pro Tour. You're like, oh, right. okay. Jesus. Oh, okay. I see what's in my opponent's hand because I'm watching the stream from the cell phone in my lap. <laughs> good thing I brought my iPad to the feature match area. Bless their heart. So, so that's that. Um, we're still waiting on Wizards to come back with some amount of we're really actually serious about cheating this time. For me, I'm okay with diligence on this. Their silence is obviously conspicuous. Um, and my hope is that it's as a result not of them forgetting or hoping to sweep it under the rug, but that they're taking their deliberate time to come up with a proper measured response. That's my hope, a dream. Remember, they brought this up in August. This this measured response in August. I know. All right, just saying. Jerry did his thing not that long ago, is my point. No, he didn't, and I hope that it... I'm it, holding out hope. You know, it springs eternal. What are we going to do? <laughs> well, look, uh, totally different issue at this point, moving past cheaters into a platform where you can't, which is Arena. Uh, someone noted that the extra and uh, each extra copy of a card, this would be in the fifth copy of whatever card you open in MTG Arena, is worth about one thirty-fifth of a new card of the same rarity. And vomit. Some, 
first of all vomit second of i'm all, not even sure what a vault is so okay it's fine it's what it's it's worth <laughs> the magical digital bits go when you get a fifth of something because right. on that program it doesn't fuck it doesn't matter it did you do- nope didn't do it <laughs> didn't do it um the ratio of other games however is interesting hearthstone they noted it's one fourth one out of four for epic and legendary one out of five for a rare and one out of yep. eight for a common um but again you can only play two cards there you can't you know play multiple. i mean it's pretty it's everything. pretty similar in gwent or in Shadowverse or in um uh eternal i think they're all around one third to one fifth <laughs> Absolutely. So, and, and people know, and I think this is true. Shadowverse is probably one of the most reward heavy games I've ever seen. Like, yeah. if you just look at Shadowverse, they're like, here, have some packs. We're so sorry. Thank you for your And, like, it's crazy. Like, they, they love showering you with everything in that game. Um, and that's neat. Uh, but, but again, people kind of bring up, like, hey, these systems are different because the games are different. The deck building is different. Uh, I just personally did not know that was even a thing that each extra copy was worth 135th of a new I don't new even card. know what a Gwent is. Gwent's weird. I didn't okay. like it. Um, I, I, I like actively did not. Isn't that a that Dutch game. city? Am I thinking of Ghent? It was a game. That's Ghent. Ghent. Okay. A card game in the Witcher Three games, or well, the Witcher games that they literally yeah. created a real card game, a real digital card game about. And it's Witcher's the, the Witcher show that's going to be on Netflix with Harry Henry Cavill, right? Right. Yes. That, it started as a novel series, and then it turned into a video game, and now they're turning it into a TV show. Got it. Okay. Um. So, and and Gwent is again, it's a digital card game. It's weird whatever um and uh time to get uh, a little grindy in the gears uh in the way of one for vorthos mike one mike uh, lineman who had yeah who had originally said you know someone jim casale um had had written uh, today i learned dragon shields making classic art sleeves and he actually links to, to cool stuff because you know we're, we're selling them there's their supplies whatever um and what you have is a classic piece of art, you know, like a, a, a true classic classic as you see in museums, and they stuck a dragon in them. Like, I'm going to link to the product here so you guys can see it on Cool Stuff. I was going to say, these are available on, on the coolstuffing.com. <laughs> you can buy them right now. We do have them or in stock. Or you can buy Cool Stuff, or, you know, in this case, this is it doesn't seem like he's so cool with these. It's not super cool. Um, and he says, you know, they took art history masterpieces. They added a dragon to them because no copyright. Uh, good. I never needed. I needed a longer list of places to never support. Oh, God. These are tacky. They're super tacky, guys. They're really tacky. Um, uh, he says story time. This is like if you took a Bob Ross painting and then painted a robot in it. <laughs> like if you found an old, yeah. like an 1800s, like yeah. snowy um, mountain with some happy little trees and then painted like a dirigible flying in the sky basically i mean you know you took starry night and you like put it you just like stamped a dragon on it and you're like i got it this is a brand new product well i guess which is which is like a fine idea but like i guess this was not implemented particularly well either is the other problem yeah well look he mentions that he worked in the rights and uh, reproduction uh, area of a museum that that deals with copyright and artist rights and public domain and preservation of art uh and theft essentially uh of people who took classic pieces of artwork they didn't know that their their artist rights or the copyrights were still in uh in possession by someone at some point and uh and that turns into an issue uh because clearly at that point you're stealing but some of the old old stuff the crazy old stuff there's no copyrights anymore it's just just whatever um so uh whatever we how we saw r and r uh was to work with companies making prints or calendars or whatever and loan them mega high-res images even if these things aren't in copyright you got to get a giant image that is print quality in order to use them you don't you know you can't just google it and just print whatever you find you got to find something that's good enough to print um uh, with no heirs to most of the art, the museum basically handed reproductions and the money made from it went back into preservation, which is super expensive. Um, should a museum hand, handle copyright? Usually no. In most cases, the uh, emails were, uh, they forwarded emails uh, to the Artist Rights Society and reported people infringing artists and so on and so forth. Um, eventually, it kind of came all down to like, you know, you could take a Mona Lisa and you could stick a dragon in the background. Is that... You know, are you really making a derivative work there? Are you really making something new and interesting and exciting? Are you doing anything at all but essentially aping on this artwork? And that's what's always kind of bothered me about products that have classic pieces of artwork on them because I'm just like, well, who's really getting paid here? And how much did you invest in getting those images in the first place? 
It just kind of yeah. makes me uncomfortable. I mean, I have I have nothing to add. I mean, that was a pretty comprehensive yeah. uh, breakdown. And anything Mike has to say about art and art history and the the uh, the the safety and and laws surrounding it, like what am I gonna do against that? You know, there's there's nothing for me to add there. I mean, to take the the classic, I think this Whistler's Mother, I believe, is the official title of that. That is weird. Like, it, why? Just to just stick a big old dragon in her lap. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have any deep thoughts on it, you know, in the vein of, you know, Mike obviously works around art and obviously it's sort of his lane and so I don't really have much to add. It's just, it's just tacky. It's kind of like in fashion. It's like when you take a piece of clothing that is meant to be, you know, sort of a one of a kind kind of item and you mass produce it at that point. It's like, yeah, it's, it's fine, but it's like, it just wasn't meant to be at TJ Maxx. You know, it wasn't meant to be, it was meant right. to be something that you saw on a runway or it was meant to be something you saw on an award show, or it was meant to be, you know, kind of a one-time outfit. It wasn't meant to be something that everybody could necessarily wear or something could, you know, so it's, it's just tacky. And, and there, and there was a debate, certainly a debate on, you know, this is out of copyright, who cares? They're not doing anything yeah. wrong. They're not hurting anybody, whatever. And someone said, look, it's awful because, uh, and this was on Twitter, uh, it's awful because someone took something that is meant to be a one-of-a-kind masterpiece, cheapened it by subverting their own meaning into go. it, then mass-producing it in a capitalist cash grab. Yeah. Think, think, about taking, think about taking something awesome like Purple Rain by Prince, and then without asking anyone, decided to auto-tune it, change half the lyrics, then set some of it to college basement bar ska music. And you're like, well, you could do that. But, but why? No, could you not? You know what I mean? Like maybe one day you could have that right. It goes out of copyright, whatever. You don't really have to do that. If right. you it want could be to. somebody's aesthetic, just like, you know, these sleeves could be somebody's aesthetic. It, it could be a thing and, and that's fine. Um, you know, and, and it feels like they've got, they do have some fans still in the chat here. You know, they, they did nothing <laughs> wrong. There's just a dragon they slapped on there. They had to pay somebody to put that dragon in there at some point. Um, but again, personally, I just yeah, yeah. they've done they they haven't done anything wrong. It's just you know they've done weird. They've gotten they've gotten straight weird. They haven't done anything wrong. They're just tacky, and I hate them. Right yeah. there, you go. Well, <laughs> also technically, the piece is not named Whistler's Mother. It's just colloquially called that name. Technically, oh, it's look at this arranged, guy. It's named the Arranged in Gray and Black Number One. Whoa. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, we have gotten taken to school. The principal's <laughs> office is right over there. The playground's over here. The man has no idea where he's living on a weekly basis, but he can tell you the name of artwork. <laughs> Technically, it's art school. It's not. I'm just taking him to art school. Right. Oh, and, for, and to be to be clear, this is 100 non illegal. There's no. There's zero. <clears throat> no. There's nothing oh, yeah, illegal about what's it's going on here. It's tacky. It's just tacky. It's, it's just tacky. They, they're not breaking any laws. I just go like. <sighs> it's a crime against fashion, not a crime against law. There you go. There you there go. You all right so we are in 2018 and few things are as 2018 as ninja is streaming fortnite on ellen now listen speaking of fashion i mean i have mentioned before that i am one of the few people that's in support of a dress code when it comes to competitive events did you see you're on Ellen, my dude. Like, I understand that you you guys love your ruffled hair. You love your rolled up. I'm not saying he had to pull a Todd Stevens, but that boy looked a mess. Like, you went on he national. wearing his own hoodie. Like, you went on national television. He's, wear he's wearing an item of clothing on his chest with his own name like he's a rapper from uh, the 90s. Yes. You have all that money and no one told you, like, you might want to run a comb through that or you might want to put... The hair was blue, to be fair. I mean, yeah. what are you going to do to be uh, Just a, a guest on Ellen? But for sure, 2018 is strange when Ninja is on Ellen and Ellen is on Ninja, by the and way, on, on Ninja Fortnite. Stream, yeah. Which, yeah. didn't we cover a story in which Ninja was like, I don't want women on my stream? And lo and behold. <laughs> and lo and behold. Um, well, I mean, Ellen wouldn't want him back, so. Wow. Well. But yeah, it was, it, I mean, you know, Ninja is the number one brand in streaming right now. Uh, and it's no, and, and Ellen has her finger on the pulse of all things cool kids. That's not sarc sarcasm at all. No. She has everybody from every viral video the two days after the viral video happens. Oh, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, you've but she also internet. has a lot of her audiences is quite frankly moms whose kids probably play Fortnite who maybe have no idea what Fortnite is. And so to have so, to have someone like Ellen explain it to them or have them to for them to have a point of reference, like, oh, this is something I saw in Ellen. I think that's a huge get. And yeah, I was just amazed at that. I remember just seeing it on Twitter and I was like, what? Like, am I sleeping? And I, I don't mean, know what happened. To, happened. Be, to be clear, I have spoken to many like, you know, many adults who have no idea what Twitch is. They have. Yeah. Zero for sure. clue. My just... my the woman who does my taxes still has no idea what a podcast is. She's convinced I go in a literal pod to record my cast. Like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I, I, again, like this is a, a show my mom could watch, could talk to me about, hey, I saw that ninja kid play that video game with Ellen. That's weird. But at least now she's heard of the term Twitch. She's heard of the term ninja. She's seen this kid and has some idea what's it about ants and uh ants and grandmas all over the world just got clued in as to what's going on on the internet right now and that was really cool i think that part mm. was really neat yeah. um as for you know bathing and wearing stuff that doesn't have your name on it <laughs> y'all can argue about that one it's fine uh, um rubes you had yourself a pact that was broken it did how, how'd it go episode one enemy of the guild pact aired last saturday you're sounding much more confident than the last time when you were like my name's ruben i have a I show we're gonna die to watch it. We're gonna waiting die. is the hardest part all right and now it's here and now i'm ready to go it was ready to go ready for it was episode so two. much fun it went better than i could possibly have expected um do, do you want the synopsis of what happened I just want you to cut to the part where Feather flew down and whooped Aurelia. Can we cut to that? Is that happening? Yeah, we can cut to that soon. Okay, great, great. Wow. Uh, I'll, I'll take the, the elevator uh, explanation. So uh, the players in the game and the characters that they're playing, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that, that hint real quick. So Ashlyn Rose, popular cosplayer uh, and voice actress who's in The Chalice, which we've talked about uh, before on this show. Uh, she plays the Celestian life cleric Loxodon named Tuturu. Uh, and the, traditionally, at that point, you go, doo doo because that's her name. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds better than the original Loxodon, but that's what she's playing. We have an Azorius mm -hmm. cleric of order named Lucian Ladrian, played by Garav Galati. Uh, Velma Sweet, the half-elf Orzov Bard, being played by Riley Silverman. And Astarok, who's a Boros fighter and a Minotaur, being played by Jordan Pridgen. Um they are sort of fi find themselves in a film noir style scenario with the body of uh, of Tuturu's mentor turning up murdered. And they are sort of already in some mystery and conspiracy and cover up and intrigue surrounding that. And uh, and it's we're just one episode in with the, the plot getting ready to thicken. So tune in. The VOD is up um, on Twitch and on D&D's YouTube um and i'm having a ton of fun doing the show and i can't wait to show you guys uh what what we have in store episode one was great set up episode two uh really beautifully and i'm really excited to see what you guys have to say about episode two leading into episode three which will be live at twitchcon at the end of this month hello wow well, well i got my name in lights i got like billing up there with with matthew lillard and Sam Witwer and Chris Perkins and all these super famous people, wow. um, and then little, little old me. And the there. internet's Ruben uh, Ressler. On everybody's lips is gonna be. That's right. Ruben, where's your little growing sign? Great. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I'm also gonna be hosting uh, uh, two hours, one on each day, Saturday and Sunday, of uh, arena streamer battles. So I'll be oh. hosting some of those as well. So you'll see lots of me throughout the weekend. Wow, very nice. Well, uh, I know that you know the Broken Pack was something you worked on for a very long time, and I think yeah. as we mentioned, a lot of the work was just the the, the pre the you know the, the build the preparation, the prep, just getting out of your head, really, getting and also getting out of my own head. You all know that I'm an anxious person. I have panic attacks and all that kind of stuff. And the months and months leading up to it was was weighing on me, especially right before episode one. Um, but now that it's here, and I have such a great support structure with my cast. And Dom Zook, benevolent overlord of Saving Throw Show, who's my producer. Uh, the folks that I'm having who are helping me write and create the story. A.E. Marling of the Vorthos cast mm -hmm. is one of the big voices here. Because he's, you know, every time I have a lore question, I'm like, A.E., I need your help. And A.E.'s like, I'm on it. I want this to succeed. And of course, my buddy Emmett Fury, who did the storyline for the Stream of Many Eyes. 
Uh, he's done. He's written for so many RPGs in the in the past, including an episode, uh, several episodes of the Vast RPG, which is to this day one of the most experimental, fascinating things I've ever seen uh, on streamed gaming television. Uh, and so, with our powers combined, I think we're putting together a really good product. Very nice, very nice. Well, uh, we have just a few moments here, so I wanted to back up a little bit to a story that we actually didn't get to in our previous segment of Desperate Ravings. Uh, and this was, what's wrong with the WOTC coverage survey by Jerry T. There was a Google Doc that he wrote where he cut out some screenshots of this survey that they sent out about WOTC coverage and basically said, you're kind of, if not asking the wrong questions, leading people kind of down some predictable paths where he kind of points out some things like where you just say, well, you know, over the past year, the quality of coverage uh, has gotten, has improved, stay the same or declined. If you say it's improved, does that mean they're done? You know what I mean? Does that mean we're all we're all good here? Let's let's, let's stop improving the coverage because we've gotten to a nice plateau. Um, so, so that's the thing. Uh, and one of the things I thought that I appreciated was he pointed out the question, you know, how often do you watch Magic Tournament coverage uh, on the channel? And then they say stuff like, I prefer to watch modern, I prefer to watch standard, whatever. And he says, why is there no follow-up? If you prefer to watch modern, why do you like watching modern? Why do you like watching standard? It's, and as he mentioned, he said, what people do is far less important than why they do it. Like, yeah, you usually watch that, but is there a reason? Because the reason will help you with that decision-making. Um, you know, again, I watch GPs, but I enjoy them less than PTs or Worlds. Like, what? I, I guess, you know, again, why? Why do you dislike or why do you like PTs and GPs versus World Champs and Magic Cups? You know, that that type of stuff kind of gets you going because, you know, what's a, what's a, what constitutes a segment? Drafting? Good morning, Magic? Like, who knows? Top 8 coverage? Is that a segment? Like, what what's a segment when you ask for people what their favorite segment is? It's just, it's not always easy and clear. So there's a there's a lot of easy sort of, you know, a, thing, a lot of low-hanging fruit where wizards could change up the, the approach that they're having to this type of survey and get a lot more data out of it. Yeah, it felt like this survey was a lot of self-fulfilling prophecy and closed-ended questions as opposed to open-ended questions that they could actually learn from. Um, I don't know what the purpose of this survey was, and a lot of what Jerry had to say confused me. Yeah, confused yeah. me about the survey, not what Jerry had to say. Yeah, the yeah, survey, no. his, his insight made the survey seem even more confusing. Absolutely. If that makes if that makes sense, right? It just it kind of gave it an air of like maybe this isn't asking all the right questions anymore, and maybe we should try a different approach. Um, that said. We're going to move on here to the finisher, which begins with giveaways and thanks. The winner for this giveaway was Tim's Death Machine. Congratulations to Tim's Congratulations. Death, death Machine. Uh, you can Tim's Death Machine. Tim's Death Machine. Nice. Yes. Whisper uh, our, our original ostress, uh, if you will. <laughs> Whisper Aaron. Estress. 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 How dare you? Tomiko. <laughs> Estress. Mantignon. Mantignon. What else do we need? <laughs> something, something Southern. All right, cool. Uh, that's, you, you get out of anything with that. Something, something Southern. Got it. All right, go run. Um, so uh, go over here to our uh, new subscribers for this week, which is uh, Gibbus M and Promethe Anchor. Uh, Promethean Chaos 66, which I'm pretty sure is a resub. I did not, mm -hmm. unfortunately, thank catch you. it. Yeah. Uh, but thank you guys very much for subscribing. We do appreciate it. Um, and here's our... And I, are we good for my top cheers? We are good for top cheers. Go. Thank you for all of the cheers this week. Draco Lucian, Gas City Gaming, Orkish Veteran, Sexy Soy, and TS Saloik underscore. Now do the bottom cheers. And those are... Those are veteran, well, I like my top cheers again. to do things. <laughs> Well, uh, Orcish Veteran, thanks again for the additional bits just mm -hmm. now, uh, to all of our subscribers and, of course, all of our awesome viewers. You guys are great. Um, we're going to turn our corner here to the finisher. This morning, the Internet received the solicitations for IDW's comics coming out in January of 2019, including Magic the Gathering Chandra number 3. And the cover art attracted attention for all the wrong reasons, not only because Lol Tybalt and his triple-breasted jacket, but also because of the yikes-worthy cover art. Chandra at Tybalt's feet looking feels like a pretty unrealistic scenario. 
but it's comic books. Thor was a frog once, and that is almost as bizarre. So since we're in the land of make-believe, where up is down, left is right, and Tabalt is all-powerful, what other storylines can you dream up for future magic comic titles, Ruben? With all of the planeswalkers acting like stupid children nipping at the heels of Big Papa Bolas, and the Avengers finale coming soon, I need a superhero team-up. I need Jace versus Gideon Civil War. I need Days of Futures Past. But most of all, I need to know who watches the Gate Watchmen. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Aaron? Well, with AMC just absolutely killing it, both literally and figuratively with their zombie apocalypse, I'm most hoping for my girl Liliana to get out there and start kicking butt with her new graphic novel, The Attacking and Blocking Dead. Like, wow. I don't block, but some people do. Just <laughs> We just turn them sideways. Turn them sideways. That's, that's how we roll. <laughs> well, look, with Ravnica having just come out, all I care about is seeing the city planet's most popular character get a title. All I care about is seeing my homeboy Homunculus getting top billing. All I care about is the origin story of my number one one-eyed guy. All I care about is totally lost. The Philip story. That's fantastic. And that also. The Convoking Dead. I would absolutely watch that show. Convoking Dead is nice. Oh, yeah. I, like I, like I had it. a homunculus character in the first episode of The Broken Pact, too, who wore glasses, by which I mean he wore one big giant lens with connector pieces around his head. Wow. Wasn't there a course set where we had a Convoke reanimation spell? Wasn't that a thing? I seem to recall. Uh, Return from the ranks. Okay, there Return we go. Return to the ranks. It might have been that, but I remember that being a thing. So yeah. Something like that. Well, let me tell you, that ends another live episode of Magic Mike's. Thank you for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you, everybody. See you next time. That's right. Woo woo. We move on to our final slide. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, my co-hosts, Aaron Campbell and Ruben Bressler, you guys for watching or listening, and hope you support us at Patreon.com slash MagicMikes. Please follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe, do everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us online on our Discord, Twitch.tv at MagicMikes, our Twitter at MagicMikesCast, our MagicMikes subreddit, and like the MagicMikes page on Facebook. Talk to us privately at MagicMikesPodcast at gmail.com. Follow the audio-only podcast at MagicMikesPodcast.libsyn.com, or find us on iTunes, or join us here next week. Same time, same place for another episode of Magic Mike's. Good night everybody. <laughs> <laughs>